Day three of Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial ended with not only a seated jury, but also an interesting exchange. Just a few minutes ago, we got a transcript of today's proceedings, and here is how that interesting exchange went. Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, says, I would ask that the people, meaning the prosecution, provide us, the defense, with the names of their first three witnesses so that we can prepare. Prosecutor Joshua Steinglass. Look, I, I got to be honest. That's a courtesy that we normally extend. Mr. Trump has been tweeting about the witnesses. We're not telling who the witnesses are. Judge Mershon. I can't fault the people for that, Mr. Blanche. What if I commit to the court and the people that President Trump will not tweet about any witness? Judge Mershon not buying it and saying to Trump's lawyer, I don't think you can make that representation. They won't give it to you today or tomorrow, and they're not required to. Boom. The concern over witness safety is part of a broader concern here about Donald Trump's outbursts. Earlier today in court, prosecutors asked Judge Mershon to hold Trump in contempt for seven problematic social media posts he has made since the trial began on Monday. And that is on top of the other problematic posts Trump made earlier that the prosecution says violate his current gag order. Joining me now is Andrea Bernstein, journalist covering Trump and legal matters for National Public Radio, NPR, and author of American Oligarchs, The Kushners, The Trumps, and The Marriage of Money and Power. And of course, back with me is Jeremy Salant. It's great to have you both here. Um, Andrea, I, I'm curious to hear uh, your assessment of this. It really feels like we talked about the intersection between candidate Trump and defendant Trump. And here, candidate Trump's outbursts and, you know, sort of weaponization of the jurors and the trial and the witnesses is really redounding not to his benefit here, right? Like, the, the prosecutor, the defense is not going to get the names of the first three witnesses because nobody trusts them to keep it yes. under their hat. Yes, that was a surprise. And, I mean, I, look, we all know who the witnesses are going to be here. It's not a huge surprise. It's just a question of order and strategy. But there was Judge Juan Mershon saying directly... I don't trust you to keep no. your mouth shut or your fingers off your keyboard, so therefore you don't get this list. You've lost that privilege. And already, I mean, on the first day of the trial, when he said to Trump, writes that he reads to everybody, but it really mm -hmm. resounded when he said, if you disrupt the proceedings, you can be expelled and I can send you to jail. Right. Because in all of the other trials that I have covered, of Trump that he has attended, he has disrupted the proceedings. He's had interactions with the judge. He's muttered in front of the jury. I mean, he's spoken, I should say, audibly in front of the jury. I could hear him. They could hear him. And he stood up and gave his own closing arguments in the fraud trial after he had been told directly by the judge, you can't do that. Right. So when Rasham says that, he has the weight of history behind him in that judgment. I mean, I, I also think that it, it betrays the well, like, should we call it a fractured relationship between T Trump and his lawyers? Like, his lawyers are out there saying, well, what if we promise you our client isn't going to tweet about this? And or we're just going to keep it amongst ourselves. And the judge is effectively saying, like, you have no basis for saying that. You have no control over your client. They, they can't make that promise. And just to be very clear, the, the court is not, or part of me, Josh Steinglass is not saying, I'm not going to give you the witness's name and information. That's already been turned over. Mm -hmm. To your point, it's just the order of who's being called. And in the normal course of things with a very cordial relationship, that's shared. But to your point again, he is undeserving, meaning Donald Trump, to act as he is acting to get that information. I mean, and I, I would assume, just in, by way of preparation, it's good to have the information, even if you know who they're going to be. The order of things right. is not insignificant. But you also expect that you're prepared for all those witnesses, whoever they come. Sure. But you, you, it would be very helpful, unequivocally so. And also, this happening day one, it doesn't exactly set the stage for, I don't know, a cordial working relationship between the two. I mean, it is an adversarial process, Andrea. But you, you point out the way in which Trump is incapable of censoring himself or exhibiting self-control. And I wonder if you think the duration of this trial, the fact that he has to be there every day, you can tell us what it's like inside that courtroom, but it doesn't sound like a trip to Disneyland. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously unhappy. I mean, I think that one of the things that happened in the course of the other trials was that he figured out a way to make it redound to his benefit. This trial, he is going to be listening to testimony about an extramarital affair that he had in 2006 and a hush money payment, stuff that is much clearer 
to the public than he overvalued or he undervalued his assets or how much is Mar-a-Lago worth anyway. Everybody knows what having an affair means and everybody knows what a porn star is and everybody knows what a playboy, playboy model is. Mm -hmm. And he has to sit there and listen to that day in, day out. I mean, when I was reporting previously and speaking to people who worked for him, they said he could barely sit in any single room for any period of time that they were told when they gave him presentations to give him one word and three images. Right. And this is, I mean, long days in a very kind of cruddy and uncomfortable courtroom, which is either too hot or too cold yes. and just, you know, a very far cry from Trump Tower. Well, and he made a point outside of the court today to talk about what a sham trial it was. He was armed with a stack of newspaper printouts or, or uh, post print, printouts of website uh, and Internet articles and complained about the temperature in the courtroom. This is someone whose self-control is going to have to extend not just to the court room itself, but after hours as well, right? I mean, the, the well, question here obviously is, what's at issue. And yeah. the, the gag order, I mean, I guess my question to you would be, what is your expectation about this gag, gag order? I mean, I, he has really been challenged in following any of these gag orders. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I think Mershon has clearly shown that he is drawing a line, Judge Mershon, and that he is not going to accept it. So we shall see. I mean... As with everything else in this trial, we have no priors. Right. So we cannot say what is going to happen because we don't know one minute to the next, let alone one day to the next. All we know is that Trump has a really hard time. I mean, for example, after the, he was told to pay $83 million to Adrian right. Carroll, there was a period where he stopped saying, I didn't do it. And then he started again. And $83 million is quite a disincentive. Yes. So can he keep his mouth shut now? We shall see. What will it take? We will find out. Do you think a couple hours at Rikers is even in the cards? I mean, I hesitate to even say that because it seems so far-fetched. Well, there, there, first of all, number one, a contempt can be civil or criminal. And if it happens in front of the judge, the judge can summarily say you've committed contempt. If it happens outside, like the tweeting or true socialing, if that's a, a verb. True thing. Uh, true thing. Uh, then it's a separate actual hearing. He has a right to you know, challenge that. Uh, will the judge put him in for up to 30 days on Rikers Island? Uh, probably not. Could he sit and you know, cool his heels uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the tombs behind? Maybe. That's possible. Uh, a $1,000 fine is really insignificant. But that, it's that exposure for most people who don't go to this point. But for most people to know that I can go to jail for 30 days and a judge can make that decision, and it's pretty serious. So is it possible that he sits... Somewhere on the side there. In That's, an even colder room? Yeah, yeah. or even, even right there. There's benches he could sit. It's, it's certainly possible, but he's not going to go to Rikers. And he knows that. He knows that. So Stress testing the judicial system. That is where we are right now. Andrea Bernstein, Jeremy Sland, it's great to see you both. Thanks for your time and thoughts tonight. Great to talk to you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.